here at an undisclosed location somewhere near the NRA National Science Museum. I'm here with Phil Schreier. He is the senior curator of said museum. And Phil, we're talking about the Roosevelt series. We are so, oh, well, you're touching, and I'm so close, I could be touching some unbelievable treasures from, uh, from the, the, the legacy of, of Teddy Roosevelt. Tell us what we have here today. Well, John, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the wonderful things that, uh, that happened to Theodore Roosevelt uh, it, that propelled him into the White House uh, to become our, our president in 1901 uh, was his service in the, uh, in, in the Spanish-American War. Mm -hmm. uh, he had been an assistant secretary of the Navy, uh, but when the Spanish-American War broke out in April of 1898, he resigned his uh, cabinet position and formed, helped form the first U.S. Volunteer Cavalry, uh, otherwise known as Roosevelt's Rough Riders. Oh, the famous Rough Riders. That's right. Uh, and in what he called his crowded hour, uh, his charge up cattle in San Juan Hill, uh, is, is what kept him uh, front page news, mm -hmm. uh, right? In, up to the point where he became the uh, vice president on the vice presidential ticket of, uh, of President William McKinley in the uh, the next election. I, I think if most people think uh, anyone who knows about Teddy Roosevelt, that's probably the most popular way people know him and most popular image we put in our mind of him is as a rough rider and charting up that hill. Absolutely, and uh, you know what a what an opportune event. I mean, he was he trained with the Rough Riders. Uh, this entire process began in April. And by uh, late August, he was back home again wow. uh, and, and world famous. Jeez. Now, one of the things that he, uh, that he took to Cuba uh, is this beautiful uh, Model 1872 officer's uh, sword. Uh, it's much different, as was all of Theodore Roosevelt's military equipment, than standard Army issue. Uh, this has shark skin, uh, a shark skin covered hill. Uh, most army officers kept a leather covered hill. Navy officers had the shark skin. So having been the assistant secretary of the Navy, he might have had this carried over from his, his Navy days, but now that he was in the, uh, in the army. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful sword, um, Philadelphia made. Uh, well, Philadelphia retailed. It was uh, made in Germany. Right. Uh, but the neat thing about it, John, is uh, the inscription right here on the uh, blade, uh, acid etched, carried by Colonel Theodore Roosevelt, 1st USV, 1st United States Volunteer Cavalry, Santiago, 1898. Wow. Santiago, Cuba. Jeez. Now, the uh, interesting thing about this is in most... Uh, drawings that Remington or some of these other guys did of the charge of the Rough Riders up San Juan Hill, you don't see Theodore with the sword. Uh, the Rough Riders uh, got into a, a few skirmishes prior to Kettle Hill and San Juan Hill at Las Guiamas at Daiquiri, and Roosevelt felt that, uh, or found that uh, trying to traipse through the, uh, the dense Cuban jungle with the sword, he got tripped up between his legs more than once he left it in his tent no. uh, on the, the day of the fateful charge. Uh, but this was with him in Cuba. Uh, and at Sagamore Hill, it has a place of honor uh, in the Great North Hall, a 40 by 40 foot trophy room that he built onto the house, a later addition. And uh, the, uh, the sword rests in the antlers of a North American elk that he had, had taken at one point. And right above the, uh, the spot where the sword is oh. uh, on the elk hangs a, uh, a beautiful hat. Uh, and you can see that gravity and time have kind of shaped the hat a little bit. Wow. Uh, because this hung from a tine on one of the antlers as well. Uh, but this is the, uh, the Stetson slouch hat, as they were called. Uh, that Theodore Roosevelt uh, wore, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, in Cuba. Seen so many, so many drawings, pictures, paintings, seeing it, and sitting right next to it, Phil. It's it's amazing. It's stunning, and and you look at the original photographs, you'll see uh, this very uh, the very hat. There's two very distinct rectangular square holes, uh, cut into the felt 
You'll see that in the original photograph. Uh, this is not to say that this is the only hat he had. In fact, Sagamore Hill has one or two that I know of on display. But this is certainly identifiable in more than one photograph of him. So uh, what were the holes for? Uh, they hold the uh, the pins for the uh, uh, the Calvary uh, thing here. Uh, on the inside, you see that it is marked uh, uh, Frank's of uh, Frank's Brothers of San Antonio, Texas. Mm. That was the retailer. The manufacturer was the John B. Stetson Company, of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Talk about the real deal. There's a hat that was well worn. The last time I, I uh, was in San Antonio, just steps from the Manger Hotel where Roosevelt stayed and raised the Rough Riders was, uh, was Frank's brother's hat, Hatters. Uh, and the thing that he bought this right outside the Alamo in, wow. in San Antonio. And then, of course, behind us uh, is his tunic. Uh, now, it is one of a number of tunics that he took to Cuba or wore, was definitely photographed with. Some had yellow facings and high stand-up collars with uh, yellow facings on them. Uh, they show up black in the black and white photographs. Weird thing that yellow does with black and white film, but it shows up black. Uh, you see uh, different, uh, different devices on the collar and the shoulders, epaulets and not. This is one of the original Brooks Brothers manufactured uh, in New York. On, on their, their shop on, uh, I believe the tag says on, on Broad Street in, uh, in New York. Uh, it still has the tag and it was dated April 1898. So it was one of the, when he first resigned his commission and, and, and got his, or first resigned his cabinet post, got his commission as Lieutenant Colonel of the Rough Riders. He ran out to uh, Brooks Brothers and had custom uniforms made. The hat, the tunic, the sword. It gets better. Oh. It gets a Can lot it? better. Oh, yeah. Because, John, right over your shoulder is the one. I mean, there are a couple of tunics. There's a couple of hats. The sword wasn't even there that day. But what was there, John, was the regimental colors, the standard of the 1st U.S. Volunteer Cavalry, the Rough Riders flag. Oh. And two flags went with the Rough Riders, the national colors, and the regimental standard. And that is the original, one and only, 100% silk flag of the Rough Riders behind you, uh, hand-painted uh, American Eagle and Shield. Oh. It's been uh, painstakingly restored by the Park Service and preserved uh, so that it will, uh, it will be around for generations to come. Phil, how can we see these unbelievable treasures here at the National Farms Museum? Well, John, thanks for asking. Uh, trappings of an icon Theodore Roosevelt, the Oval Office of the Summer White House will be open in mid-May of 2012. Uh, it's located in the Roosevelt Beretta Gallery of the National Firearms Museum, which is open from 9.30 to 5, seven days a week, free admission, plenty of parking. Uh, we're located at the intersection of Route 66 and 50 in Fairfax, Virginia. If you can't visit us off the interstate, visit us on the internet at nramuseum.com. Phil, thank you for a wonderful look at these treasures from the Roosevelt series, and we're going to have more as we come back later next week in more Curious Corner. Thank you, sir. Our pleasure.